Hello and welcome back to another episode of Lightroom 101. Today we are going to be tackling probably one of the most complex and powerful tools in Lightroom, and that is the tone curve. This is an image that I just finished uh, doing a tone curve on and the rest of the editing as well. Um, but let me show you the difference between tone curve on and tone curve off. So it's um, pretty clear that it can make a huge difference. And I'm gonna try to go through and show you everything it can do, but there are a lot of things. I think things I still don't know, but let me just show you how I use it, what each part of it actually physically does. And yeah, all right, let's get started. I'm gonna make a new virtual copy. I'm gonna reset this tone curve. All right, so there we go. Um, your tone curve, if you're just starting in Lightroom, probably will look like this, um, where you have sliders to affect different portions of the tone curve, but um, you're not able to do as much. Um, I only use the tone curve in the, uh, in the way where you can add your own points and move them. So that is going to be how I teach it. If you want to do it the other way, it's a little bit more handholdy and you can't do as much. So it's, I just don't suggest it. I would suggest learning this way and get a lot more out of it. All right. So the basic overall tone curve where it's the full RGB spectrum, you are effectively editing the histogram. So think of it in the way where this side over here on the left is uh, full blacks and then this side on the right goes all the way up to completely blown out full whites. So this line is basically editing a value. So this is a darker portion and we can lift it up. And you can see it's lifting up a lot of the curve. So what you, if you don't want, uh, say the highlights to be lifted, you grab another point and you pull this portion down you're doing what you want to do on the image. Obviously, this is not what you would want to do on an image. I'm just trying to explain how it works. Um, so basic ways people use it. I think there's actually a preset called just contrast. You can pull down some of the darker portions and lift some of the lighter portions. And that is giving you contrast in the same way as the contrast slider is going to give you contrast where you're brights are brighter and your darks are darker. That's uh, what I used to use it for only. It works well for, for that, but let me show you what else you can do with it in just the RGB spectrum. So you can lift the blacks, the full blacks, and make them a little bit off black, like gray almost. And that's kind of uh, usual for like a film look if you want to look kind of like a faded film type thing. And then you can also do the same thing in the opposite way with the highlights where you can drag those down and kind of blow out the higher highlights. It's almost like a, a almost like a bleach filter, which is also um, something that is uh, often seen when you're trying to do retro film stuff. That's about it for RGB and you can experiment around as much as you want and you can get different effects by like pulling certain portions down and leaving certain portions higher. Basically what I suggest with the tone curve on RGB is just mess around, see what type of tones you like. Um, and yeah, that's about it. And when you hear people talking about on Instagram, they're like, oh, nice tones. That's normally um, color and this. Uh, people really enjoy the lifted shadows uh, film look. I know I do, but you can do whatever you want with it and adjust your image however you want. All right, let's go to the slightly more complicated portion where you're gonna go into individual colors, red, green, and blue. And what you can do with this is that it's the same thing. You're affecting the values along the histogram, lights on this side, darks on this side, except you're only affecting the color red. So you can bring out the color red just by dragging and bringing it up, but that's over pretty much the whole image. Or you can make some points, drop down the color red in the highlights. So now you have more bluish greenish highlights, which is another thing you can do. Um, and basically how I use this is to create different like uh, color tones and color palettes that aren't as easy to get with anything else other than just like, okay, let's bring 
Let's make these shadows really, really green for some reason. We're gonna need to pull down the red in the shadows. And then we're also gonna need to compensate that by I bringing it back up in the highlights to an even tone so it's not messing up the whole image. Um, we can even do the same thing as uh, I was talking about the faded film look where you lift the blacks. You can lift the reds in the darks so that your dark portions have kind of a faded film look with red. And that's a really good way to introduce different colors into your shadows. I'm gonna go through each color and just do my own look real quick and you can just kind of watch me do that real quick. So there we go, I'm pretty happy with this color scheme. I just wanna uh, explain something real quick I forgot to explain. When you do something on the red portion, uh, if you don't do something on the green and the blue to balance it out, uh, it will change your photo drastically. So don't get discouraged if you're trying to do an effect and you start on the red and your photo looks way too red or um, way too green or blue. Um, just remember to balance it out with all the other colors individually and play with it and tinker with it from there and then you can start seeing an actual color scheme come out. This portion of Lightroom is a lot harder. It's taken me uh, a while to just kind of understand it and learn it. I suggest just even if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable using it in photo editing right now, I suggest playing with it so that you can just kind of get an understanding. And it's hard for me to just straight up explain it to you because it's, it's, it's one of those things that comes with practice. You know, you see an image and you can feel out how these red, green, and blues will look in the darks, in the highlights, in the midtones, all that stuff. Um, but I do highly suggest playing around with the just the RGB tone curve. It is super useful and it is very um, intuitive. Once once you use it a couple times, you can get the hang of it um, because it's it's super simple. It's just these are the, the higher tones. You just lift them up to make them brighter. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, this is how I did this image. Let me try to explain each tone. So I brought the highlights basically back to a medium on the red and I lifted the reds just a little bit in the shadows, but you can't see it as much as just red because I equaled it out with the greens. I lifted the greens, so it's more of like an orange-ish color. And then the greens, I lifted the highlights just a little bit. The blues, I kind of pulled down the blues in the shadows that way. We're seeing kind of a yellowish green tone. So that's about what I did for this image and that's about the tone curve. Again, I just suggest playing with it even if you don't like your results, keep playing with it. You will eventually start doing really good. Also, if you download presets like the Visco presets that I uh, clearly have up here, um, they have their own adjustments in the tone curve and it's actually a really good way to learn the tone curve is to say find a preset from them. I don't like that one. Let me find one real quick. There we go. I like this one quite a bit. And so a really easy way to learn the tone curve would be just seeing uh, or taking one of these presets and looking what they did in the tone curve and then trying to maybe emulate it, uh, copy it on your own just to, to help you understand uh, why they did it. So yeah, that's about it. That's the tone curve. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom 101 video. Again, I'll be making more all the time so please subscribe if you like this tutorial also if you want to know anything specific let me know in the comments and i will try to respond or even make a video about it uh, in the future thanks for watching